Hey everyone, Amy here on another episode of Vintage Space Tries to Play Kerbal Space Program, and today we are looking at the bumper rockets. So just a quick recap for those of you who are unfamiliar with Kerbal Space Program, KSP is a computer game where you can design, build, launch, and fly your own space missions. We're not in the Earth's solar system, we are on a planet called Kerbin, and everything's a little bit different, um, but it's still a pretty good approximation, or at least a really fun approximation of space flight. So today in the VAB, we are going to build a stand-in bumper rocket out of stock Kerbal parts. I know there are mods that you can actually build more realistic rockets, historical rockets, but um, we're, we're focusing on the history history lesson not on the game here, so we're just going to use stock parts. Now the bumper rockets were an, an offshoot of the V2, the American V2 program. Of course the V2 was the German uh, rocket developed during the Second World War, launched against European cities, mainly England, or London rather, um, towards the end of the Second World War that the American engineers and Soviet engineers and scientists on both sides tried to capture to understand the technology and ultimately develop their own missiles and weapons out of the V2. One of the offshoots I've talked about before was the Blossom series, which were the first first biological rockets. Um, they launched, notably, four rhesus monkeys named Albert, along with uh, corn seeds and sort of uh, uh, other small biological payload, just to prove that there was a way to keep something alive, alive in space. Um, these rockets, the bumper rockets, were not biological, but because I'm not very good at launching unmanned satellites in this game, we are still going to use a basic pod, and we are going to have Jeb Kerman, our pilot, be the, the guidance system, because I also am not so good with autopilot systems yet. So what makes the bumper rocket so interesting is that it was actually the first ever successful two-stage rocket. Now we're all familiar with rocket staging because most rockets that launch these days and most rockets that we're all familiar with are multi-stage rockets. The Saturn V, of course, because it's vintage space, I should bring that one up, and the one behind me. Um, the Saturn V is a three-stage rocket. So the staging of rockets happens that one stage burns at the beginning and then as soon as it cuts off or there's a little bit of lag after that one cuts off, the next one goes and continues moving the payload up into orbit or towards its ultimate destination. The bumper rocket program was conceived in 1946 and first flown in 1947 as a proof of concept of these multi-stage rockets. The second stage of the bumper rocket, because we have to build from the payload down in this game, was a WAC corporal, which was sort of the smaller, the, the little sister of the corporal rocket that was developed by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in the 1940s. The WAC corporal was designed as a small sound rocket and it used hypergolic liquid fuels. So we're going to use the smallest fuel tank because it was a tiny little rocket um, and just the basic Terrier engine. Um, and because the two stages have to go separately, we're going to create another, another stage in here. We're going to put a very just the smallest liquid tank that we can find on here because it wasn't very big and just a simple liquid fuel engine. And because it was a V2 and like I've said in previous videos, the V2, um, sorry, fins were kind of Warner Fund Brown's uh, trademark. We're going to put four basic fins just for a little bit of steering and guidance help on this rocket, but also um, also because it's it's what it had. So here is our bumper rocket. It does not look anything like the actual bumper rockets, which are this rocket. This is the bumper. It's much more streamlined. And what you can see is it's got the, the familiar body of the V2, the tapered body, body of the V2. Um, and the very thin stage on top is actually the WAC Corporal. So it was a much smaller rocket, much, much less powerful than I think this rocket is gonna be. But this is our stand-in bumper and we're gonna launch it and talk a little bit about the bumper launches. I'm gonna fly this one slightly to the west only because I don't wanna land in the water because the first six bumper launches launch at the White Sands Proving Ground in New Mexico, a landlocked site, which um, I've talked about before because it's where all the Alpert monkeys also launched from and where the American V2 program really got its start. Um, the first bumper rocket was launched on May 13th of 1948 and it failed because the WAC second stage cut off prematurely. Uh, the second bumper launched the same year on August 19th and the the first stage failed, so that rocket didn't work too well either. <laughs> the third bumper launched on September 30th of the same year, 1948, and again the second stage, the WAC stage, failed. The fourth bumper launched on November 1st of 1948 and suffered a tail explosion in the V2. The fifth bumper rocket launched on February 24th of 1949 and it was a successful flight and it reached a peak altitude of 244 miles, which was pretty high in the late 1940s. Um, and the last bumper to launch from White Sands was bumper number six. Um, it launched on April 21st of 1949 and suffered a premature cutoff of the V2 as well as the uh, failure of the WAC stage. It didn't fire. So ultimately the first six launches of the bumper program were 
partially successful in that every failure did teach the engineers something new about how to make the next flight a success. In 1949, it was becoming quite obvious that a landlocked site um, with populations nearby, um, because there was a V2 that nearly exploded uh, the town of Juarez, Mexico, um, it was clear that these, these bigger rockets were going to need um, more space and ideally something not landlocked because that was the problem of having populations nearby. So it was around this time that the military started looking at a long-range proving ground, something that would be uh, safe to launch rockets without having populations nearby. Ideally, that would mean by the water. The next bumper to launch was actually bumper number eight, and it launched on July 24th of 1950, and it launched from the site that became Cape Canaveral. It was the first launch out of Florida, and a second bumper, bumper number seven, followed on July 29th, just five days later. Both of these were successful low atmospheric flights um, that covered about a 200 mile range. So the bumper project was a relatively short project. While there were a lot of technical problems in this early program to prove that multi-stage rockets could work, there was actually a lot of knowledge gained as well. This was the program that proved through multiple firings that the speed of a rocket or missile or a payload like a satellite or spacecraft could be increased with successive stage firings. If the stages could separate cleanly and the velocity not be lost during the staging process, it was clear that this was a great way to get payloads into orbit. What else is really interesting about the bumper program is that it really is the, the kind of bringing to life of a concept that Werner von Braun and his team at Penamunda had had during the Second World War. They developed the A9 and A10 rockets, which were variants, later variants of the V2, which was also called the A4. Um, and these were two multi-stage rockets designed to cover a massively larger distance than the V2 could alone. One A9 launched under the name of the A4B and no A10s launched, but they were both designed to greatly increase the range of a V2 rocket in flight. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me try to play Kerbal Space Program. I promise I am getting ever so slightly better every time I play. Um, but mostly I hope you enjoyed learning a little something about the bumper rockets and where the earliest trials of multi-stage rocket flight came from, at least in America. Leave your questions and comments below and of course any other missions, especially early concept missions that never actually got off the ground, that you would like to see me try to replicate in Kerbal Space Program with a bit of a history lesson. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as ASC Vintage Space for daily Vintage Space content and with new episodes going up every Tuesday on Friday, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.